Hey guys, it's Cam with Tecamo. Today we're at the Koken booth. We're here with Clay from Coon Trucking. And we're gonna talk about some Koken tools because it's new to me. Carly from uh, Koken is gonna go through the tools with us. Coverage of the SEMA show is sponsored by Fortis HD and Mueller Coops. So go buy some tools at FortisHD.com. So the first thing is actually what Clay is holding. We have what's called a nut grip socket. This is a patented mechanism from Koken. The nut grip socket basically has two ball bearings on the interior and a spring on the exterior. The ball bearings actually push out on the spring causing a friction hold, which holds nuts and bolts without a magnet. It can work on non-magnetic fasteners like stainless steel, plastic, also does not collect magnetic residue. The back of the bolt can be extended into the actual socket because there's no magnet stopping it from being inserted. Clay actually has a extremely deep nut grip socket that's great for turbo cars where you can insert the bolt, etc. I know you work on heavy stuff, right? So that long spring clamp that takes forever and then you gotta switch to a ratchet. So that's where that design come in. And obviously yeah. if you ever back the nut off, it always falls somewhere you can never find it, right? Yep. So when I seen the nut grip, this was what come to mind and Carly and her team was super cool to make a full non-skip set. It's great for any application where you have the charge air cooler, any of those yep. long clamps. Like V-band clamps, you know, you got like a real long thread there. Yep. After you cinch it up, you got to switch to a ratchet like you say. So I mean, I can definitely see a use for them. Haven't acquired that yet, so I'm still just using a ratcheting wrench. I've heard when the snap on the wobble plus, I believe is what they call it, right? So like everybody fell in love with that. But when you kind of learn the truth and the deep dive in the tools, <laughs> Koken started that. Yeah. So everybody says this company, this company, this company copied snap on. That's not the truth. Yeah. They copied Koken. Yeah, so this is the wobble fix extension from Koken. So basically that diamond design with the fixed function, the dual function, was originally invented by us. The patent has expired, which is why Snap-on and some few other vendors have it now. So again, it's that dual function, the wobble, and then the fix. We also have custom knurling here. It has a few functions, really. It's anti-roll, it's great for greasy hands, and this is done individually on a machine. First thing I noticed about the knurling, it's in the right spot, exactly. which if you're a mechanic, you do this professionally every day. Everybody, even the big tool companies, put the knurling in the wrong spot. The dumbest thing I've ever thought, because you got a 12 inch long extension, why is the knurling up here? Like, yep. you can't beat that. That's like such a nice way to do it. it just, and it's simple. It's like a little thing like that to me is like all the difference. You can get in there when it's not quite finger tight, but you want to put something on there, spin it out. That's night and day. It's like little things like that that I like. What's some of the other stuff you guys are kind of doing a little bit different than yeah. everybody else? Another really cool product of ours is the spark plug socket. This is a Z-series spark plug. So Z-series means it's going to be compact, thin wall. It has a brass clip on the inside that actually guides the ceramic of the spark plug into place to prevent damage and then snaps in, again, without a magnet. And you can actually see that it's almost completely flush with the spark plug, so you can yeah. get into those tight recesses. Yeah. Way better than a rubber boot. It won't fall right? out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it is a lifetime warranty. So. Not something we come across a lot in like the diesel or heavy trades and not a lot of things of spark plugs, but after treatment systems, maybe one time I might come across that. Do you ever deal with stainless hex? Stainless hex? Not often, but it does come up. It's always a pain because no, you can't magnetize it, yeah. right? You're trying to start it in a hard to reach spot, it's going to fall off your hex. You know, everything's got plenty of room, so you should be able to get your fingers in there but that's not always the case. So these guys took the same technology and put it into a hex yeah. bit. So we call this the grip ring and it's not rubber, so it's not gonna be an annoyance and it's not gonna fall off. It's actually a metal clip that has another tension hold just like okay. the knuckle grip. So not even just stainless, honestly, I can use that on hydraulic valve banks, hydraulic yeah. fittings, that kind of stuff. Cause we're constantly changing hoses, the four bolt clamps on them. You have four of these bolts around there and everything's greasy and oily. and Usually what ends up happening is you're holding the hose with one hand and holding the clamp with the other, whatever, and bolt falls out, and where does it go? It goes all the way down, not just through the belly pan. Usually it'll find a hole and hit the rocks and go through the rocks and it's gone, and you're not finding it. For a lot of us equipment guys, doing valve bank work, anything like that, especially when you're on hump hoses or something way up on the machine, you don't want to use two hands. We very rarely have two sure. free hands. There's little things like that. You can get a, a bolt started even if it's down, up, it doesn't matter. You know, that holds your, your hex, right? We don't come across a lot of stainless hex, but I come across a lot of hex in awkward spots and that's definitely gonna be handy, you know? And so the advantage of not having a magnet, right, is yeah. 
you know, that never gets rust and junk down inside it. Never, right? It's always perfectly clean. Obviously, the reason why you can a lot of hex out is because you can't bottom it out, right? Yep. So it's less contact. Since that's not magnetic, you're able to get down in there. Even if it's got a little trash in it, it's not going to yeah. stick to it. I think it's an advantage over like a magnet because you know you're not cleaning all that shit off. And when you, usually when you clean it off, what do you clean it off with? Your your fingers. So if you like slivers, I mean you're yeah, doing right. that all the time or on your shirt. And the cool part about it, it's all rebuildable, right? So yeah. like if you break the spring here, all you got to do is call Carly. Yeah. She'll send you a new spring, new yeah. balls. I mean the you're idea ready, behind yeah. it is just a hog ring. Sure. Like yeah. on your impact. Yeah. yeah. It's very simple. It's not some finagly, finicky sure. thing. It's a hog ring on your on your hex. So there's no reason to have overly complicated tools, especially in the field, especially when we're out in the bush. I don't need. 188 teeth on my ratchet, you know? Less teeth is better anyways, so. Right, well speaking of cool things with their ratchets, not only do they have some really cool ones, like you yep. see that one there, it's a quarter inch body with a 3 8 drive in it. So that allows you to get yeah. an extra tight spaces. So a few other tool companies do do this, but what I've noticed is these, the, the coking heads are nice and thin. They're fairly small, they're very low profile. I hate lots of teeth because the, too many teeth, you get too much drag on your ratchet. Kind of become a bit of a marketing thing. It has, I've noticed yeah. is, oh, we got this many teeth, little arc swing, all this stuff, you know, so many teeth. Less teeth is better, simpler. I mean, what do you got, 72 teeth and yeah. a 36 tooth? I picked that up, I like, I fell in love with well, it. Well, it's so smooth, it was, uh, even for a 36. And most people wouldn't guess point, it was a 36. That's the point, like, tooth. it's smooth. You don't even need a lot of teeth when you got that. I could almost blow on this and turn it. This is the 36 tooth model. Yeah. So you can see that it follows the teeth there. And then the 72 tooth, the new model, actually is a patented dual paw mechanism. The first paw is fixed and the second paw is actually floating. So it follows somewhat of that model, but kind of separates it and builds yeah. it up. So that teeth, it actually pivots with the gear and moves with the ratchet. So it never skips a tooth yeah. and is always there. Because of that, it has a higher torque rating, almost all the teeth at once on one side, and it's just a, an easy mechanism to use. And now, do you guys make these 36 and flex heads as well? We used to. We're upgrading yeah. everything to the 72. Okay. It's still a very, very smooth, very smooth uh, mechanism and really low back drag, which as a mechanic, when you're doing this, back drag is a very underrated thing that a lot of guys might not think about like the marketing it kills it you get caught up in the more teeth more better uh back drag's a big thing and simplicity like yeah. less teeth bigger teeth they're not going to be breaking as easy they're not going to foul up as well with dirt and debris rust those teeth turn into little balls of rust i've taken my ratchets apart and serviced them in the field because so many teeth they're really fine when yeah. you get a little rust it in there they're a just, little they're bit junk. yeah well one of the cool things about coking is so their impact sockets are different you know everybody yeah. wants to compare everything to snap-on of course if you use the snap-on impact socket you know it's a super soft socket and after a lot of impact and i'm sure you've had to do it take a file and yeah. hit it so you can just get it back on yeah. your impact these guys have run a lot of impact stuff in the industrial world yeah. where they assemble like on assembly lines so those sockets are getting pounded, right? One of the things you look for, right, is obviously it's got a lifetime warranty. That's great, but what if you're out in the middle of nowhere yep. working on something like you guys do and your socket fails? Yep. It's got a lifetime warranty, but you're a long way from getting it swapped. Yeah, well, right? lifetime warranty is useless when you're three hours out. It doesn't do anything for me. So a couple different companies have done tests for us because you know we basically said, here's a sample, do the test, and you'll see the value. So I can't say the specific companies that have done that, but they found it's five to 10 times longer than the sockets that they used in the past. And the reason for that is actually the manufacturing process. A lot of companies hot forge their products. We cold forge our tools and cold forging is more accurate, has a lot tighter tolerances and is stronger. And so because of that, we tend to last five to 10 times longer. Yeah, so we got like a driveline style of socket, you know, for getting around the U-joint and whatnot. But look at the wall thickness on these. I mean, it's quite a bit thinner than a lot of comparable companies. I mean, you get some of these impact sockets and they're just like, well, it's an impact socket. It won't blow up at least if we got enough meat there. And I've been a big kind of like simplify my tools on the truck, run what works, don't have an excess of tools. Because I have a small truck. I have an F550. I can't fit a full slew of chromies and impacts 
So I went to all impacts. Getting an impact socket that could fit everywhere and almost do the job of a Chromie. I went to Snap-on for a reason. Wall thickness and availability, what we can get, you know, but they offered a good wall thickness, strength, all that stuff. You know, looking at the Koken stuff, looking at the wall thickness, I mean, I'd be interested in trying some of it out and seeing how it compares. Also, we cost less than Snap-on because yeah. we manufacture everything that we sell. We don't private label anything. Everything's manufactured in Japan at yeah. our one manufacturing plant. We have the availability to have yeah. it at a lower cost. So, well, you were talking about the thin wall of impact thin walls, sockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is actually a wheel nut socket okay. and it's extremely thin wall here so you can fit into those tight wheel walls. It has a rubber bearing on the bottom to protect the lug nuts and also has a replaceable cover to protect the actual wheel well. Okay. So you can get to those tight crevices, protect the wheel well, protect the lug nut, and just take good care of your car. Final drives on excavator so you don't scratch the sprocket, right? <laughs> well, speaking yeah, of excavator <laughs> work, I know you like big tools, right? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. a lot of times we just show the tiny tools with yeah. token. So, so we have, I believe, up to two and a half inch in our impact and chrome line. We have actually a huge two and a half, $6,000 socket over there that is used to manufacture yachts. But this is our um, 24 tooth methodology because it's all about torque with these guys. So it does not have fine teeth, but it does have a lot of torque. These go for, I think, a little bit under $300 a pop, and our longest length is 1,000. 1,000 millimeters, so heavy industry, heavy tools, usually equates to heavy prices. <laughs> Great price point. I'm actually planning on grabbing a few maybe later to throw on the other trucks because when you got to tool up multiple trucks, these expenses start to add up and just going on a tool truck and dumping money like you'll see me doing one of the other episodes is, uh, it gets expensive, man. Yeah, I mean, but it's a necessity. I have to do it. We have over 7,600 tools yeah. and over 200 types of 10 millimeters. But we only do sockets, socket accessories, and socket wrenches. Yeah. We stick with what we're good at because we want to produce the best quality tools we can. Oh, that's great. So. That's the Koken booth with uh, Clay from Coon Trucking. Check out his channel if you guys haven't yet. Yeah, if you're not already subscribed, go subscribe. Talk to you guys later. Love you, bye. See ya, see ya. All right, bye, see ya. Buy some parts, sportshd.com. Buy some rubber tracks, sportshd.com. We have it all. Buy some tools, gear the coops. We got some fun new stuff coming too. Check it out. Are you an experienced heavy duty mechanic thinking about going on your own? Click the link in the description to fill out the form. Tecamo, your heavy equipment support network. Is there anything else we should check out Dude, while we're down if here? you guys haven't seen Grip Edge, you gotta go. They're in the North Building, North Hall. Okay, all right. Pretty cool stuff.